The Russian president signed a decree Monday evening recognizing breakaway Luhansk and Donetsk regions in eastern Ukraine as independent republics, telling Russia's defense ministry to deploy troops into the two regions to keep the peace. The president made the announcement live on TV after an emotional address in which he referred to eastern Ukraine as ancient Russian lands managed by foreign powers. Announcing his recognition, Vladimir Putin also signed treaties on friendship, cooperation and mutual aid with Donetsk and Luhansk leaders. The Federation Council has already ratified the treaty. The Russian leader also took a swipe as Western powers, which support Ukraine, saying they are not interested in peaceful solutions. They want to start a blitzkrieg. Putin also accused Ukraine of extreme nationalism and Russophobia. The Ukrainian president, Vladimir Zelensky, in turn convened a security meeting on Monday and today noted that the issue of breaking diplomatic relations between Ukraine and Russia will be considered soon. Meanwhile, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said in Berlin on Tuesday that commissioning of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline is on hold since the situation extremely is tense now. The international community reacted to the Russian president's decision to recognize the Luhansk and Donetsk region in eastern Ukraine as independent republics. NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg accused Russia of continuing to fuel the conflict in eastern Ukraine and trying to stage a pretext for an invasion. The EU has also slammed the recognition, noting that the EU and its partners will respond to this with unity, firmness and determination and solidarity with Ukraine. The UN in turn noted that this decision is fraught with regional and international consequences. This came as the OSCE said that the decision of Russian President Vladimir Putin to recognize the independence of the regions contradicts with Minsk agreements. Meanwhile, the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson noted that Putin's decision to recognize Ukraine's separatist states is a bad omen, while Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan called the decision unacceptable. And Artsakh Foreign Minister David Babayan in turn lauded the recognition of the independence of the regions. The Artsakh Republic also has all the grounds for the recognition of its independent statehood. These are historical, legal, ethical and ethical academic basis, he added. A meeting of the Armenian Security Council chaired by Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan was held Tuesday. The meeting was also met by acting president of the country, Alain Simonian. Issues related to overcoming the challenges facing Armenia and the processes taking place in the international arena were discussed at the meeting. Vladimir Putin had on Tuesday a meeting with his Azerbaijani counterpart Ilham Aliyev. Before the talks, there were reports that Russia intends to officially raise relations with Azerbaijan to alliance level. The size touched upon the issue of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Putin noted that there are already certain agreements on the development of trade and economic ties. There are disputes, but we will do everything to ensure that the process proceeds peacefully, Putin noted. He noted also that certain agreements have been reached on the development of trade and economic relations in Nagorno-Karabakh. He said that there are also disputes, but Moscow will do everything possible for the settlement process to proceed peacefully. Aliyev in turn noted that Russia played a very important role in ending the war between Azerbaijan and Armenia. The Kremlin Monday's statement said that the following the talks, a declaration on allied cooperation will be signed, taking relations between Russia and Azerbaijan to the allied level. Russian President Vladimir Putin also had a phone talk Monday with the Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan. The sides exchanged views on the situation in Nagorno-Karabakh. The Russian president has officially invited the Armenian Prime Minister to pay an official visit to Moscow in the spring, and the Armenian Prime Minister in turn invited Vladimir Putin to Armenia. The sessions of the Euronas Parliamentary Assembly Committees took place in Yerevan Tuesday. Maria Garabetian, a member of the ruling majority civil contract faction of the Armenian Parliament, chaired the meeting. One of the topics of today's discussion was an increase of Russia's military presence on the Ukrainian border. Moldova, Belarus and Ukraine did not participate in the meeting. However, two Azerbaijani MPs attended the sessions in Yerevan. They were the only MPs who had entered the building with security officers. One of them, Sultan Mamadov, seems to have a provocative behavior as his Twitter thumbnail reads Karabakh is Azerbaijan. And during the sitting, the MP noted that the Karabakh conflict has been resolved within international law and Azerbaijan's internationally recognized borders. By the way, protests were being held since Monday in Yerevan since Azerbaijani MPs had come to Armenia. The demonstrators expressed their protest and indignation at the representatives of the European delegations for not reacting to Azerbaijan's armenophobic actions. Meanwhile, Maria Garabetian noted that as part of the discussions, the issue of the turn of Armenian prisoners of war was raised at the sitting. 
The Ministry of Health on Tuesday reported they had recorded BA2 Omicron subvariant in Armenia. The BA2 is more contagious than the previous subvariant, and according to a number of studies, it may have a more severe courses of the COVID-19. The number of coronavirus cases in Armenia has reached 416,510, and the death toll is at 1,593. According to the National Center for Disease Control, most patients hospitalized with COVID-19 and admitted to intensive care units in Armenia have not been vaccinated. About 47.8% of the Armenian population has received the first of a vaccine. Vaccines approved for use in Armenia include Sputnik, AstraZeneca, CoronaVac, and Pfizer.